welcome back to the Saskatoon Public Library's Toy Theatre Workshop. Um, still on Treaty 6 territory. We'll always be on Treaty 6 territory. It's cool. And of course, the traditional homeland of the Métis. So today, we're going to look at story development. You know, how to write a story. That sort of thing. Uh, what goes into making a story and, and, and so on. Um, so, without much further ado, let's go. Thanks so much. Hi, it's Danika again. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the story. Now, when I was little, I used to love to make up little stories and little puppet shows. And I would use little sock puppets or my toys and I would make my mom and dad watch and those little plays went a little bit like this. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Casey. Hi, I'm Sadie. Let's be friends. And that was most of what the story was. Now, that's not much of a story because nothing really happened. It's kind of like saying, once upon a time, they lived happily ever after. So we have a beginning and we have an end, but we really didn't have much of, much of a story in the middle. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the things that are in most stories. And these are things that you will find in news articles and in plays and in short stories and picture books and long stories and books for adults. Every story needs to have certain things. Sometimes there's a rule broken, but in most cases you need five, five specific things. You first need a where. So where? And I look at my puppet theater and I think, hmm, where should we set our story? And luckily, I made a beach. So we're going to set our story at the beach. And I've just used a paper clip to clip my, back, my backdrop in. It makes it a little easier for me to see what's going on in the story, to make sure that the backdrop stays to the front. I could put it at the very back, and then I could put the puppets right in. But I kind of like my puppets to be just outside. So we have my little beach, and if your story is at a beach, it's going to be much different than if it's in school or if it's in your kitchen. So think about where the story happens. Now we also need to know who. Who is in the story? So in my story, I have the little lobster, Larry, and I have the little butterfly, Pat, and I told you a little bit about them when I talked about characters. So you can probably go back and find that if you didn't see it already. So Larry and Pat are my characters and they're very different. They have very different personalities and that'll make the story interesting. If every creature in a story is the same, it's not going to be that fun to keep working on. Now, I have where and who. We want to know when. So is the story taking place at a certain time of day? Is it taking place at a certain time of the year? Stories are different if they're in the middle of the night or if they're in the morning or if they're in the summer or the winter or the spring or the fall. They're different if they're set in the past than if they're set in the present or the future. So we now have we have to think about that. So I'm going to set it in the summer, in the daytime, because we have the sun and a cloud. And I have a palm tree, so it could be in the winter if somebody was lucky enough to go on vacation. But we're just going to pretend that they're at a beach and it's summertime. So I now have my where, I have my who, I have my when. I now need, so these are the five W's. So we have who, what, where, why, and when. So we need what and why still. And the what is what happens. And usually 
we also need to know why. So what will happen? Well, when we think about what goes on at the beach, people go to have an adventure, they go to lay in the sun or make sandcastles, and we want to know why something happens. Now in the most interesting stories, there's a twist. There's something that you don't expect that will happen. It's like all of a sudden you're on the beach and you're having a great time and you're at a lake in Saskatchewan and up swims the Loch Ness Monster or a shark. Now that's something unexpected. That's something that you wouldn't usually see if you were at the lake up in Saskatchewan's north. And that's something that makes the story more interesting. Now, that's not really very believable. So I like to think about things. Sometimes my stories aren't very believable, but sometimes my stories are about normal things that happen to normal people. Maybe the unexpected in our story will be that somebody finds something that someone else lost. That's kind of a twist. Maybe somebody will get hurt and they'll need to find out how to fix the situation. Maybe there'll be a fight and they need to make friends again. So there's all kinds of things that can happen in a story that makes a story more interesting. The most important thing is that something actually has to happen. And you can just think about things that have happened to you. Sometimes that's the way that we figure out how to tell a story. We can have our lobster have the same kind of adventure that I had. That's okay. Um, one of the great things about being a writer is that you can always do it no matter where you are. And I always keep a notebook with me and a pen. And if I don't have my notebook and pen, I have my phone. And when I see something strange, I write it down so that I can put it into a story or a poem later on. I love to write, and that's one of the best pieces of advice I can give you. If you want to write, 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 write. Write down the strange and beautiful things you see. Write down the memories that you have from your childhood or this weird COVID-19 time we have right now, or write down the stories that other people tell you. Write, 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 and you will find that you will come up with some pretty cool stories. Hi, it's Jim. I just wanted to say, if you're a person who just wants to perform a puppet show, or anything for that matter, and you're not really interested in maybe writing a story or designing puppets or, or even making a stage, um, but you kind of want to do this, you want to perform it, what you could do is you could cheat. It's all right. You could use a picture book, your favorite picture book. Look, it's got everything you need. Uh, in this case, it's Elephant and Piggy. So there are your two characters, the squirrel I say can hear somewhere. But here it all is. The backdrops would be simple, wouldn't they? It's all just a white background. Fabulous, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. All you'd have to do is make a, uh, an elephant and uh, uh, a pig, really, and then that squirrel, uh, as a doctor, I think. But here's all your dialogue, all ready for you. All you'd have to do is learn what uh, an elephant says. What if you tried to squeeze more softly, said the pig. Sorry, said Gerald. Anyway, it's all done for you. So find your favorite picture book and make a, a, a puppet play out of it. There you go. Thank you. Well, that's all we got for story development. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, tomorrow, we're going to look at uh, puppet manipulation. You know, how to move your puppet around and uh, maybe some tricks uh, to make it look like, I don't know, your puppet's flying or something. We'll see how that goes. Um, but that's tomorrow. And that would be day five of the workshop. So already, this is the first time you've been watching, uh, there are several videos before this and, uh, you know, and if you haven't seen them, well, they'll still be up on the website or oh, the Facebook site, rather, I should say. And, uh, yeah.
check it out. Anyway, have a great day. See you later. Bye-bye.